Now that we know what the diameter and radius of a graph are, it's worth looking at some examples. In this video, we'll talk about the diameter and radius of tree graphs. In particular, we'll identify what type of tree graphs have minimum diameter, those are also the ones of minimum radius, and we'll find the type of tree graphs that have maximum diameter, as well as maximum radius. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on diameter and radius, but as a quick recap, the diameter of a graph G is the maximum distance between any two vertices. And the radius of a graph G is the minimum eccentricity of any vertex in the graph. And the eccentricity of a vertex is just the greatest distance that the vertex has from any other vertex. So the radius is the minimum of all maximum distances that vertices have from other vertices. Okay, let's begin by discussing the trees of minimum diameter, which again also have minimum radius. Let's start by thinking about the first non-trivial tree, which is just a single edge with its two end vertices. Now, this tree has a diameter of one, since the maximum distance between any two vertices is obviously one. Now, if we add one additional vertex, the only possible tree we could have is this one, which is just a path graph, and the diameter of this graph is clearly Two. So if we could find a family of tree graphs that always have diameter two, certainly that would be the family of tree graphs with minimum diameter, since we see a tree graph with at least three vertices has to have a diameter of at least two, since this is the only such tree graph. All right, so what if we add another vertex? Could we keep the diameter at just two? Yes, we could. If we join this to the sort of middle vertex, the diameter is still two. Pick any two vertices, and they're only two away. And we could continue in this way. Add as many vertices as you want. As long as we join it to that sort of central vertex, the diameter of this tree will remain only two. Two. This type of graph is called a star graph, and these are trees, and we see that they are the tree graphs of minimum diameter. The diameter of a star graph is two. Like I said, the trees of minimum diameter will also have minimum radius. So what's the radius of a star graph? Well, again, the radius is the minimum of the eccentricities. The eccentricities of these outer vertices in a star graph is 2, because the eccentricity is the maximum distance that a vertex has from any other vertex in the graph. And if we pick a vertex not in the center, its maximum distance from any other vertex is just 2. However, the vertex in the middle has an eccentricity of 1, because its maximum distance with any other vertex is 1. It's 1 away from every vertex, aside from itself, from which it has a distance of 0. So, the minimum eccentricity of any vertex in a star graph comes from that middle vertex. That minimum eccentricity, and thus the radius, is one. Now, how about the trees with maximum diameter? And remember, the diameter is the greatest distance between any two vertices in a graph. To answer this question, it's helpful to point this out. The diameter of a tree is the length of its longest path. Now, why is that? It's because in a tree graph, there is only ever one path connecting a pair of vertices. So the distance between two vertices is just the length of the one path that connects them. Thus, the longest path gives us the greatest distance, and hence its length gives us the diameter of the tree. So if the diameter of a tree is the length of its longest path, and we're trying to find the trees that have maximum diameter, then we're looking for trees that have the longest possible paths, which means we would want every vertex in the tree to be part of the same big path. And of course, that means we're talking about 
path graphs. So the path graphs are the trees of maximum diameter for a given number of vertices. What is the diameter of the path graph PN? That is the path with N vertices. Well, just take a look at this one for an example. This is P5. The diameter of this graph is one, two, three, Four. The longest path has length 4, and you could probably tell that the diameter of Pn will be n minus 1. These will also be the trees of maximum radius, however calculating the radius is a little more complicated. Remember that the radius is the minimum eccentricity of any vertex, and the eccentricity of a vertex is its greatest distance with any other vertex. So among vertices in a path graph, the vertex who would have the least eccentricity would be a vertex in the middle. So if we've got a path graph with an odd number of vertices, then we've got exactly one vertex in the middle, and its eccentricity is, well, let's see, what's its greatest distance from any other vertex? It would be one, two. So that seems like the radius would be n minus one divided by Two. So for five vertices, for example, n would be five, so this would be five minus one, which is four, divided by two, which is two. If you picked any other vertex in this path graph, its eccentricity would be greater than two. Like this vertex here, its greatest distance with any other vertex is one, two, Three. So hopefully you can see how the central vertex is the one with minimum eccentricity. However, this n minus 1 over 2 is not the full story. What if our path graph has an even number of vertices, like now the path graph has six vertices? Well then, the vertices of minimum eccentricity will still be the ones in the center, but of course now there are two vertices in the center, and they both have the same eccentricity. If we focus on this vertex, what is its eccentricity? Well, if we try to go to the vertex here on the right end, that's a distance of one, two. However, its greatest distance with any other vertex is going the other direction, one, two, three. So hopefully you can see the minimum eccentricity in a path graph with an even number of vertices is half its number of vertices. Like in this case, we've got six vertices and we found that the minimum eccentricity, the eccentricity of a central vertex, was one, two, three. So to adjust this formula to account for even n as well, we just need to put it in a ceiling or round up function. This way, when we plug in six, for example, it would get reduced by one to five and then divided by two to two and a half, but then it would be bumped up to three just like we want. That's what this ceiling function does in case you weren't aware. It just rounds non-integers up to the nearest integer. And that's it. The trees of maximum diameter and maximum radius are the path graphs. And the trees of minimum diameter and minimum radius are the star graphs. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Strap.